Hey, deserving listeners, 90 Day Fiance, let's watch. As I always say, all of my videos, all of my podcast episodes may contain triggering material, so watch with care. Let's watch. Yeah. Your, your, your son or no? <laughs> it's a weird <laughs> question. Oh, my God, Yara. All right, I'm going to drink to that one. <laughs> okay. Yara, so why is your baby not sleeping in its own bed? Because I was by myself and I no need a creep. It will be a lot harder later as she gets older. I know that. Because it's going to become her routine. Uh, so this idea or this debate is a huge problem in America in particular. And there are different pockets. And I realize that America is, you know, there's 400 million people or something. So there's a lot of different ideas about this. But the baby needs to feel safe. The baby needs to feel cared for. The baby needs to feel uh, understood and paid attention to. And it's it's really healthy to lit to sleep with the baby. Now, on the other hand, you want to have mommy and daddy time. And how do you facilitate that? Well, maybe you get a babysitter. Maybe when the baby goes uh, down to sleep and you just kind of know, like, yeah, usually we get about an hour here. And, you know, you just go in the other room. But this notion that the woman just said that if a baby that age, <laughs> that's not a seven-year-old child. That's, you know, it's a newborn that the newborn child is going to get too used to sleeping with mom and dad, and you'll have a hard time weaning them away from that, is ridiculous. <laughs> it's like not borne out in the data. Uh, it, it, you know, there's a lot of different ways to ra raise a child. There's a lot of different ways to make a child feel safe and cared for. You can use cribs. Some kids take to cribs uh, faster than others. But the notion that Yara has to defend herself as uh, someone who sleeps with the kid, particularly because Jovi isn't home for most of the child's life. And so the baby is used to sleeping with Yara and Yara is used to sleeping with the child. Uh, it's, it's not a hard thing to do. And uh, this notion of like the, the child's going to become you know, too attached, too dependent, too needy, it's actually the opposite. When you reject children in this way and, and force them away from you unnaturally, they actually will become more needy. Children want to become independent. If every, any of you have been around kids or had your own kids, from day one, they want to get away from you. They want to come back, but they also want to get away. The key is to have balance between those two states. They can come back to you a secure base when they feel safe. They can venture off and play with the toys when they're one year old. And when they're 17, they can take a car out and drive and take someone out on a date or something and everything in between. But they need to have that secure base and that secure attachment to return to so that they can, that can give them the security to go off and do things. So to have a child attached to you and close to you and given enough love, but the freedom to venture off when they want to and you being okay with that, that is the optimal balance. I know that. Right? She'll miss me. She'll wake up and then she'll say with my mama. Whoa, 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 whoa. I want actually when she will grow up to have a house in my backyard. So, you sound like a psycho. She's not going to be very independent if she stays in your bed. I know. It's a direct opposite. Now, she doesn't have to sleep in the bed, but it's okay if she is in the bed, is what I want to say. It's actually the opposite. When you, in general, push too far, and Americans, American parents do this a lot, particularly in the past, where there'll be this in very early message of don't spoil your child, don't create a dependent child at this age, which I find to be mind blowing that people would be concerned about a child of this age to be too needy of their parents or risking too much dependence. Look at the child. The child can't do anything on their own. Of course they're dependent and will be for years. So <laughs> this notion, but so Americans, what they will do, uh, the, you know, because of pressure from the outside and stigma or shaming is what's happening right here, is they will reject their children too early in general, not only by putting them in cribs too early, but by emotionally pushing them away too early. And what that does is it creates a dilemma for the child and they have essentially two choices they can make. They can either say, I give up on attachments, which is avoidant attachment, these are people who are seemingly robotic, who have trouble with vulnerability. They run from any kind of attachment in, in insecurity. 
but they deeply, deeply need attachment security. Uh, so they're constantly at odds with themselves. So that's one choice. The child's like, ah, I give up. Um, I don't. I can't depend on others. I'm good. Other people are bad. Or the opposite, where the child will say, I need to lean into relationships. I need to be more demanding. I need to amp up my neediness, not only consciously, but also neurologically, unconsciously. And so for those people, they will say, I'm bad. Other people are good. I need to constantly chase other people and alert them that I need them so that they will pay attention to me because that's the only way I can get my needs met. So when you reject a child, you're either risking them becoming completely cut off from their emotions and, and, and eternally lonely and unhappy, or you're condemning them to be constantly needy of you. The key to producing an independent child is what I was saying before, is where you are there, you're a secure base. When they need you, you are there. And when they want to venture off, you let them venture off and you let them make mistakes. And when they need you, they come back. Um, this is a metaphor for life, obviously, and it's age dependent as, as you get older. But at this age, <laughs> they're, they're telling her that by having her sleep in the bed, that this child is automatically going to become too needy and too dependent. <laughs> I mean, if the child was five, I'd be like, well, maybe, but this age, <laughs> that's just ridiculous. And I can't tell you how many clients come into my office who at least, you know, half of the reason why they're in my office is because of this kind of pressure on parents, where the parents feel like, well, I guess I have to reject my child. Not a good thing. All right, well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. If you didn't know already, I have a cameo where I can give you a happy birthday or one of your loved ones a happy birthday or a happy anniversary or something. Also, we have merch, as you might know. There's a link below where you can get various different shirts and cell phone um, thingies, <laughs> cases, and mugs, and pillows. <laughs> and everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.